You know, I find it really interesting that Mitch McConnell, he refused to allow a vote on another stimulus package. The Democrats passed the HEROES Act in the House months ago. He won't even allow a vote on that. And it's imperfect. It's not good enough, but it's something. Right now, Americans need anything. They can't put food on the table. They're getting evicted. You need to give them some relief. Wouldn't take that up. He wouldn't even take up Donald Trump's $1.8 trillion proposal, down from $2.2 trillion that Nancy Pelosi was proposing. I repeat, the Republican Senate Majority Leader would not take up the Republican President's stimulus package after the Republican President publicly said, I want to pass this, this package. But he had time, of course, to rush through a far-right Supreme Court nominee, confirm that individual one week before this election to make sure that his corporate donors got exactly what they wanted. And it just goes to show you that this is asymmetric warfare. Now they're going on recess while the American people are just being left out to dry. So the Republican Party is playing as dirty as they possibly can play, using every single procedural tool at their disposal, being as openly hypocritical as is humanly possible. And it's time that Democrats actually fight fire with fire, which is why they have to make sure that their number one priority, if they take back the Senate, is court packing. And I know that some of them are not on board, including uh, Democrats that I uh, like, or I should say independents that I like, such as Bernie Sanders. He's not necessarily been open to ending the filibuster and packing the Supreme Court. Not acceptable. Nobody is allowed to uh, not accept this because we can't afford to have three to four decades worth of nonstop conservative rulings and undo what little progress we've made. So whoever isn't on board is going to have to get on board because we don't have a choice. Otherwise, we are allowing the Republicans to wage asymmetric warfare, not just on the Democratic Party, but on the country itself. Now, some Democrats are starting to vocalize openness, if not outright an endorsement of court packing. Ed Marquis tweeted out, end the filibuster and expand the Supreme Court. That is exactly what I want to hear every single U.S. senator say. Now, I think that they're going to play coy whenever this question is brought up before the election. But the day after that election, I better start hearing a firm plan to pack the court. Term limits, expand the court. I don't know, but you can't just allow there to be a 6-3 majority on the Supreme Court and watch all of the civil rights and civil liberties that activists fought for for decades to just be overturned like that. Not acceptable. So you've got to fight. And that means you fight fire with fire. So Ed Markey is right on the money here by explicitly saying, we're going to pack the court now. Sorry, uh, Republicans packed the court. So we have no choice. We have to do that as well. Now, even someone who I wasn't expecting to be open-minded about this is starting to change his tune a little bit. Independent Angus King. And as Sahel Kapoor of NBC News reports, Senator Angus King of Maine on the Senate floor tonight said, I don't want to pack the court. I don't want to change that number. I don't want to have to do that. But if all of this rule breaking is taking place, what does the majority expect? What did they expect? They expect that we are going to be able to break the rules with impunity. And when the shoe is maybe on the other foot, nothing is going to happen. The people over here are going to say, oh, well, we can't change the rules. One of the things that's amazed me since I've come here is how people feel they can do things to one another and never have it have any consequences, never have it come back on them. The shoe may be on the other foot. We don't know what's going to happen next week. So that right there is really big. He's saying... You guys are playing dirty, so maybe it's time we play dirty as well. Now, on top of that, Brian Schatz is uh, starting to use rhetoric that might suggest that he's becoming a little bit more open to the idea. So he tweeted out his speech from the Senate floor, and he added, The old Senate has been destroyed. We need to build something better. So what we're starting to see now is some really small signs that some Democrats are actually going to fight. Possibly. We'll have to see. And it's incumbent on us to hold them accountable. But we're seeing some signs of life. Signs that maybe they're finally willing to fight because the Republican Party has proven that it is ruthless. They will do whatever they have to do to make sure they get what they want. 
So it's time you start fighting as well. Um, now, there's going to be a number of senators who are not going to budge on this. Dianne Feinstein is one of them. Now, she's not up for re-election until 2024. Does that mean we just give her a pass? No. If she's not going to budge on this, there should be a tremendous amount of effort, grassroots pressure, for her to resign. Because we just don't have time to wait until 2024. Democrats, if they take back the Senate, we have to assume they're going to have a very small window to act. They'll have the Senate for two years. We can't wait for stubborn senators to maybe lose their re-election campaigns. We don't have time. And in fact, there's already grassroots pressure for Chuck Schumer to commit to expanding the Supreme Court. Because as Ryan Grimm tweets out, more than 20 New York progressive elected officials are calling on Schumer to commit to expanding the Supreme Court. Schumer is up for re-election in 2022. This looks like a shot across the bow. And that's what I want to see. We don't have a choice. Now I'm going to make the same argument that I've been making in all of my videos where we talk about court packing because I want Democratic Party loyalists, leftists, everyone to get this through their head. We don't have a choice. The argument that Bernie Sanders used, he said, look, I don't want to do anything to expand the Supreme Court because what is that going to lead to? We add a couple justices, then Republicans are going to add a couple justices. Do we really want to go tit for tat? And um, my answer is yes. We try not to go tit for tat, but it's better than the alternative. If we do nothing and we do not expand the Supreme Court, what happens? We have 30 to 40 years of nonstop conservative rulings. But if we add some justices and have a liberal majority and then Republicans add more justices and have a conservative majority, at least there's going to be periods where there are liberal majorities, some good decisions. Inaction means conservative rulings 100% of the time. And court packing, even if Republicans go tit for tat, means once in a while there will be some good rulings still. So even if Republicans end up packing the court too, again, we have no choice. 30 years of Republican rulings is just not acceptable. We can't allow all the fights that we already won to be rehashed. We just can't allow that. Now, of course, Democrats have to take action to stop Republicans from expanding the court as well. So what do we do? We make sure that it's really difficult for them to win elections. And we don't do that by resorting to voter suppression as they would do. We actually further enhance democracy, consolidate democracy, and make sure that more people have voices. We do the opposite of what they want to do, what individuals like Ted Cruz Me. want to do. He wants a constitutional amendment to block Democrats from ever expanding the court. But what Democrats have to do is they actually have to be savvy. They have to immediately make sure that D.C. is a state because that is two more senators that will most likely be Democrats. Then you extend statehood to Puerto Rico. You allow them to vote because self-determination is important. Um, if they join, maybe entice them to join. That's two more Democratic senators, most likely. Allow Guam, other U.S. territories, to become states. And if Republicans don't like that and they say, well, you're just making it so that way, you, you know, you further tip the balance of the Senate in your favor, they have to make that anti-democratic argument. They have to argue against democracy. We're enfranchising people. We're making more people's voices heard. Are you really against that? Now, they can play dirty here, too. They can try to take red states and carve them up, like Texas, so that way they get more senators as well. Then we have to start playing even dirtier. Carve up California and other blue states like New York to make sure that we keep the balance of the Senate in Democratic control. And if they want to win, they've got to actually appeal to more people. They can't just bank on winning elections by suppressing the vote and doing voter suppression. But on top of that, we have to make sure we stop them from doing voter suppression. We are basically taking a radical democracy approach. So what we do is institute compulsory voting. We require people to vote. Every single person has to vote. Now, I don't care what you do to entice people to vote. You can use the carrot or the stick approach. I would prefer the carrot approach to where you're required to vote by law. And if you don't vote, you are not eligible for a particular tax credit of some sort. I don't know. Figure it out. 
Um, and what I would also say is that since the options typically in our system are garbage, we um, make sure that there is a none of the above option so people have to vote. But still, even if there's a none of the above option, people who are forced to come out to vote will most likely vote against Republicans because Republicans are a minority party with very unpopular ideas. So if everybody votes, if 100% of the population votes, even 95% of the population votes, Republicans know when turnout is high, they lose. So you stop them from winning by enhancing democracy. And if they don't like that, they have to make the anti-democratic case. They have to tell us and explain to us why enhancing democracy is a bad thing. They have to explain to us why further enfranchising more Americans, giving statehood to more states, is a bad thing. Why? Because they'd have to actually appeal to people and they can't just be openly fascist anymore? Oh no. So we don't have a choice. And I've said this once, I will say it every time we talk about court packing. Democrats have to do this. They don't have a choice. And as leftists, we absolutely have to pressure them with everything that they've got to where if they're not going to, you know, uh, explicitly support court packing, they've got to go. They've got to be primaried. If Chuck Schumer's not going to budge, we're going to have to primary him with AOC. We've got no fucking time for this. So um, we've got to be ruthless, at least as ruthless as the Republicans, at least as ruthless as Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham and Donald Trump. We don't have to be hypocritical like them. We don't have to suppress the vote and be undemocratic. But the way that we win and stop them from winning is by being more democratic. So we expand the court. We have no choice.